Hey, so we're doing an upgrade to our solar system. Uh, as you have seen in our past videos, we have the Alliance Solar Plus package, which came with three solar panels and 300 amp hour lithium batteries. We added a fourth uh, battery to our collection, which we're getting ready to install. This is a Renogi smart battery. It's 100 amp hour lithium ion. So we will have four total. The other thing that we're gonna be doing during this process is switching how our solar system controls our air conditioning unit. Right now, our solar runs our air conditioning unit in the main living room, which works really well. The problem that we found, and it's a preference, not a problem, but the preference we have is switching so our solar is going to run the air conditioning in our bedroom. So when we're taking advantage of harvest host or boondocking, we're gonna be able to sleep at night and run our AC all night off of our solar system. Right now, the way it's set up is the AC only works in the living room, which creates a little bit of a problem because the Renogi 3000 watt inverter only allows a 30 amp bypass or pass through. So when we turn on the microwave, we have to turn off the air conditioning by switching the AC so that the front AC or the bedroom is running off the inverter. The middle AC will be running off the 50 amp or the generator. So we will no longer have to turn off the AC when we're using the microwave, which will help reduce the heat buildup inside our rig. So right now we have three of the Renogi 100 amp hour smart batteries that are lithium ion. We are going to be installing a fourth one. So I'm gonna end up having to remove the angle iron, put the fourth battery right here. It's a fairly simple process the way that Alliance has this built. So we're just gonna run the negative off of the negative terminal just like here. We're gonna run it up to the negative terminal. We're going to run the positives just like here off the positives onto the positive terminal and that'll keep them all in sequence and then I'm going to have to go in and make some adjustments to our battery monitor so that it knows that we added 100 amp hours to our system. Um, overall very simple install very quick process to do. The big challenge is going to be changing the air conditioning from the solar system onto the 50 amp and I'm going to do that at the breakers. So a couple things to point out on the Renogi batteries. Um, as with all batteries, they have a positive and a negative. You want to be extremely careful to make sure you hook up the right side to the correct side. So the positive going to the positive or the red to the red and then the negative to the negative or the black to the black. Um, these are also smart batteries, so they actually have a data port here. We are not going to be utilizing this. Uh, our system is set up so that we aren't going to be taking advantage of this piece. And this is my little box of love. I have all kinds of extra parts. Uh, it came with two extra screws for the terminal, so I'm gonna go ahead and stick those in there. And I, if I ever need them, I got them. So I took out the angle iron that came in there that was holding the three batteries together. Um, I will admit that uh, it's a little irritating because the batteries are put in at an angle and they look like crap. They're not very well lined up. I would like them to be very neatly organized, uh, but I don't wanna put an extra, you know, basically 16 holes in the floor of our rig by re-drilling everything straight. So I'm gonna have to tolerate the fact that they're staggered and they're off a little. Okay, so the one thing I just did is I took Gorilla Tape and I covered the two holes that were right here where the screw mounts were. And then I went underneath and stuck a couple pieces of Gorilla Tape. The reason I did that is because the holes are there and obviously I'm not gonna be able to repair the metal, but I just don't want water intrusions from splashing up from the road. So I have Gorilla Tape on the top, Gorilla Tape on the bottom. I figure with the battery sitting on top of it, that'll probably do a good job of keeping it out. Um, I'm not too worried about bugs. That's a tiny little hole I wasn't thinking that they're going to get in, but water is always a factor. Okay, so now that we're, we're pretty much set up, I've got the bracket removed, I'm ready to install. Uh, two things you need to think about at all times when it comes to working on batteries. Um, always, always, always connect your positive before your negative. So you want to make sure your positive wire goes on first before your negative. The other thing that you need to do before you even get to that is make sure you kill the power. We have a battery kill switch right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the battery kill 
to off and then I'm gonna have Martha go over to the power station and turn off the 50 amp for the trailer. So for a little while, we're gonna have no batteries and no power. Then it's safe to work on your stuff. You still wanna be careful and follow the rules of positive first, then negative. So what I'm trying to do here is I'm gonna to try to take off the retaining nut, which is a 5.8. I'm gonna to try to slip on the power cable and leave all this big old jumbled mess in there. So I'm gonna take that nut off, slide the new one on, tighten it back up, and then I'll connect it to the battery later. Uh, one thing you gotta be very careful with when you're working in here, uh, when you're using a metal wrench, you wanna make sure that your metal wrench doesn't go across both the hot and the ground at the same time. If it arcs, it'll spark, probably scare the crap out of you. Might even do a little bit of electrocution. So <laughs> gotta be careful with that. Uh, just one of those things you gotta watch out for is just not arcing across the hot and the power. I mean the power and the negative. All right, y'all, don't judge me. I could not find the proper red power cord. So what uh, Martha and I did is we went and bought electrical tape and we wrapped a ground, which is the black wire, with red electrical tape to identify the hot from the ground. Uh, man, COVID's got us all locked up and messed up. We could not find a four gauge wire that was red. So redneck engineering, electrical tape. All right, managed to get it started. Trying not to tear this thing apart, trying to make it as easy as possible on myself and not mess with any of the wiring. We got it nice and tight on there. Well, I would say finger tight. As you can see, I'm working with a real tight spot. Ah, son of a... Can you go flip on your switch? Let's get some power going to this and let's see if we can. Yeah. Go ahead and turn it on. All right, nothing blew up. We're good. <laughs> All right, so we got four batteries in, no smoke. <laughs> Everything's nice and tight. I'm calling it a success. So to make it a little easier on myself, all I did was use this to start it here and there so that I know exactly where to come in and do the size of these big self tappers. I'm going to use a drill bit to bore the hole. So this is your AC wire for your kitchen. AC two. Mm -hmm. Your front AC. The yellow coating is for the ACs. Gotcha. So I'm taking this out, undoing all these for the 20 amp. All right, there's no power. Switch on it there. to this one. We're all good. So you crossing the wires this, basically. So this will come up here, that'll yep. go down this, there, and it's just This right. wire come, will come up here, and then I gotta stick it back through there and put it into this one. Fantastic. Oh, hope you turned off all the power. I'm about to find out. We heard him say it's off. I got the, uh, <laughs> hey, I turned off the 3000 watt inverter and I unplugged the unit. Pretty sure the only thing that should be running is your 12 volt. You know what I mean? Yeah. Through the battery. Well, I'll we'll take this one out first. It does what it wants to do.
is literally a matter of just pulling a wire out and moving locations of the wire, huh? Yep. Yes, it is. Let's try it. That's just your uh, AC. That's just your AC's up there working there. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Now all I gotta do is plug your unit in. Yeah, perfect. We'll let we'll let it run for a little bit before we say yeah. Okay. I'll get all these tools out of here for us. So the upgrade to the solar system and the change on the project is already done. AC1 is now our bedroom AC, which is on our solar inverter. And that means that while we are boondocking, we have the ability to run AC in our bedroom, which is amazing. AC2 has now been switched, which is on our normal panels. This is our 50 amp. That is now the main living room. The other benefit to having these switched is that we can now run the AC in our living room and run the microwave at the same time. Prior to this, we weren't able to run the AC and the microwave because the solar inverter is a 30 amp and we couldn't run them at the same time. Obviously, it was a power problem. After I installed the battery, I waited about six hours to make sure that all four batteries were at 100%. I reset the system by go ahead and holding this button down for three seconds. And now as you see here, we got 400 amp hours and our system maxes out at 14.2 or 14.3 volts. We just had to power off in order to work on the system and that's why you see it flashing up. We are done. Extra battery added. The monitors reset to represent the 400 amp hours and we've got our air conditioning switched between one and two. So now that we can run it the way we want, uh, we'll do an update down the road on how we like the system with the 400 amp hours and what kind of uh, usage we're able to get out of our air conditioning through the night when we're boondocking. Thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you have any uh, ideas, tips, or tricks that we can add to our solar system, definitely let us know in the comments. Uh, we try to respond to everything really quick. Thanks for your time. I didn't get invited to ice cream? I got invited to ice cream. You hear that crap? She got invited to ice cream, but I didn't. And she leaves me out here doing chores. I hope YouTube shames you.